So you're looking to get into a solar generator but not spend a ton of money. Let's compare three of the least expensive solar generators on the market today. I'm Scott Link and I want to talk to you about the Anchor C200DC, the Opus Exodus 600 and the Blue Eddy AC2A. Now this is not a sponsored video. I bought all three of these power stations with my own money. And that actually wasn't too hard to do since these are the least expensive models available from their respective manufacturers. There are other cheap power stations in the market, but these are the ones that I have. Now, if you want to send me another one, I'd be happy to make a video about it. Now, all three of these are the least expensive power stations that their companies sell. They can all be purchased for around $100 if you catch the right sale. I spent $109 on the Anchor. I bought a refurbished Blue Eddy for $92 that came with a warranty, and I have seen the 600 for as little as $99. None of these are brand new, so you should be able to find some kind of a deal on one of them. So let's take a look at them. First, a quick spec comparison. AC and DC. Both the Exodus 600 and the AC2A have both AC and DC outputs. The C200 is DC only and it's only USB outlets. The AC2A and 600 have AC, USB, and car charging ports. Output. The C200 can output up to 200 watts at one time. The AC2A can output 300 watts. And the Exodus 600, as you might expect, puts out 600 watts, which is significantly higher than the others. Battery. The C200 has a 192 watt hour battery, the AC2A has a 204 watt hour battery, and the 600 has a 256 watt hour battery. Size. The C200 is smaller than the others, while the 600 is the largest, though the AC2A is almost as big. Weight. The C200 weighs the least at just over 4 pounds, while the 600 clocks in at just over 8 pounds, and the AC2A is just under 8 pounds. Solar input. The C200 can take 100 watts of solar input, the AC2A can take 200 watts, and the 600 can take 240 watts. AC charging. The C200 can take up to 140 watts to the USB-C port. The 600 can take up to 300 watts, and the AC2A can take up to 270 watts with turbocharging, and those are both charged off of grid power. Build quality. Well, I've only kicked one of these across the parking lot, and it's not something I'd recommend, but the Anchor C200 took it like a champ. Scuff marks aside, it still works perfectly. The AC2A feels pretty solid, and the 600 feels like it might crack open if I dropped it from the table. Now, I'm not going to try dropping any of them, and I wouldn't suggest you do it either. App control. Only the C200 and the AC2A have app control. The 600 does not. So how do I actually use these? The C200 has become my go-to travel solar generator. If you've ever stayed at a hotel that doesn't have enough plugs, being able to charge my phone, headphones, e-reader is great, and my wife can charge her phone as well. And at four pounds, it's easy to just throw into a bag and go. And as I've said, it can take a hit. It's solid. The Exodus 600 is my power backup for my internet modem and router. The AC2A could do this as well. The 600 could run this for hours in a power outage. With the 600 watts of output, I can do a lot of things for a short period of time, but the battery isn't huge on any of these. So it's nice to have the option to go up to 600 watts, but most of the time, that won't be the case. Now the AC2A is the newest device in my lineup. I've used it on a trip, I've inflated air mattresses, we use it to power a clock and a sound machine when we couldn't get AC power to where we needed that to go. But it can do most of the things that the 600 can, as long as they're under 300 watts. What are they good for? Let's be honest. You're not powering the world with these. You might want an Apex 300 or a Mega 5, but this might be the only solar generator you can afford. And at $100, most people can scrape together enough to own one. In an emergency, they can keep some lights on, charge your phones, maybe run some small appliances. They can be great for tent or car camping. They're also great as an extra power station, meaning when you have a power outage, you might have a large solar generator on your fridge or larger devices, while this one can be in your bedroom for lights and charging phones. You might have something powering your RV or a camper and then have one of these to move around the campsite. In fact, the next time I go camping, I plan to take both a larger solar generator and at least one of these smaller units just for this purpose. I could use the AC2A and the 600 to power my DC cooler for a picnic or an afternoon in the park or ball game. The C200 can fit in a backpack or a bag and it's lightweight enough for hiking or walking around and just keeping your devices charged. Which is the best? The Exodus 600 has the largest battery and the most output. So in that sense, it has the most bang for your buck. The C200 is small and handy if you need USB charging and I probably physically interact with it the most. This one also charges the slowest. 
The AC2A feels solid and has app control and AC output. It's also pretty quiet. For portability, the C200 wins. For low power needs, the AC2A wins. I like having app control. And for small size with bigger power, the 600 wins. If you can only buy one, then you need to weigh your needs and make a choice. If you've got the money for all three, I'm sure you could find some uses for them. Either way, I really enjoy these small power stations. Having these solar generators around is definitely a handy thing. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you on the next one.